Well, welcome back to the Meadowlands. Buffalo, a good first half, leading New Jersey by the score of 4-2. to two. Greg Benavini back with Jim Fox, the Stampede are 2-0, and, oh, and I think we can both realize why. Exactly, execution. Chris McSorley, he plays with intensity, he played with intensity, that's what he wants from his team, but at the same time, they're executing. Everything McSorley told us this morning he wanted his team to do, they're doing it here tonight against the Rock and Rollers, making it look easy at times. New Jersey's had some success on the power plays. You look at the summary of the first half, 4-2 uh, Buffalo. The 27 shots on goal and 11 chances for Buffalo as Bert Hume has been very busy in the net for the Rock and Rollers. You see the scoring chances even, but you're right, Bert Hume has had three, four, perhaps five point-blank shots right in front of him. He's made the big saves that time, but other times I think Bert Hume has let in an easy goal, and that really hurts the team. Teams are getting set for the face-off here. And we are set for the start of the third quarter. The New Jersey Rock and Rollers will move from our left to right in the white uniforms. And Buffalo in the black with the purple numbers will go from our right to left. Alex Hicks checked deep in the zone. Now Martin Bergeron playing in front for a shot. Sliding stop by Batusi. Buffalo will skate it out. Here's Jay Neal coming down the wing. That's Bergeron, I beg your pardon. Goes in in front, chopping puck. Now, Meccarelli following up to Bergeron in the corner. The point man comes in, Hicks. This shot is stopped by the goalkeeper. Oh, now back behind the net. Ran there by Hicks. And the Rollers will just dump it out with 11, 12 to go here in the third quarter. Here's Hicks skating across the line. Hicks coming in, across the surface, pass for Sosha, stopped by Bertium, looking for it. I think he got a glove hand on it, lost the stick though. He has contested so many times. Cowan is checking, Jim, in this game, you just can't consistently get tested with great chances. The puck is going to go in. Exactly right, the shots are coming right from the slot. Bertium makes the big save again. Here's Cowan, lost control. Puck can be a little frustrating at times on the edge. And there probably isn't anything more frustrating for a scorer than that. I don't know why I'm looking at you, Jim. No, I, there's a good reason. Scored <laughs> 186 NHL goals. I was real good with a bouncing puck when it was flat. That's what I did. <laughs> Behind the net, Sosha. Alame dropping it for the left point. Shot there by Nemeth goes wide. Kirk will play it up for New Jersey. Maroon's on the right wing. Wild Goose gets the shot off and it's stopped. He may not have seen Maroon on that right wing. 9.54 remaining. Marshall toward the net wide. Maroon following up. Number 28 in the white. And now the Stampede comes back down again. Now on the right side, a shot by Nemeth. Oh, good stick stop. By Bertium. Shot number 29 now on Daniel. Souvenir for a fan, as you see the fan behind the net. Let us rewind backwards. That is not a mistake. This is the deuce. Buffalo, two goals, 39 seconds apart. First quarter, Neal with a nice start, goal and two assists. And Bergeron for New Jersey, Martin with a goal and an assist so far. And I think Buffalo again controlling here at the start of the third quarter. Again, what they're doing, they're pressuring. It doesn't matter. Defense forward. The closest man to the puck for Buffalo. Go put pressure on. It's creating turnovers. Jason Cerrone getting the faceoff back to Rick Corrigo at the point. Number 72 skating in. Rich shot scored through a screen. I don't think Bertium ever saw it. And Buffalo has the first three-goal lead of the game. I hate to harp on this execution, but Chris McSorley told us this morning, what they're going to do on offensive zone face-offs is use strong picks. Now, this goal comes right off a face-off. And watch Corbo. He walks right in because there's picks being set all over the ice, especially in front. So the rock and rollers can't really react to the puck carrier. They're being picked out of the play. If you get away with a pick, it's great. You can't be too aggressive. You might get interference. But it works right there The pick off the face-off. 5-2. Stampede. So Rick Corvo getting the goal for Buffalo. That is his first goal of the year, but his 22nd goal for coach Chris McSorley. For 21 for him in the ECHL down in Toledo. Corvo, one of the 
six Toledo Storm members of that Riley Cup championship team to play for McSorley. Big moment in the game, I think, for New Jersey here that I want to go down by four. 8.50 to go. Third quarter. Of course, in this game, though, you can be down by six and come back. And I think from a momentum standpoint, they want to turn it around here. Cerrone keeps it in. I think momentum is one thing, at least the way the Stampede have played so far tonight. Oh! Patillo knocked down by Corvo. Patillo may have got a stick back at Will Corvo. Referee getting in between. Nicky never wanted to shy away from this kind of collision. You have to remember, the instigator in Roller Hockey International gets an automatic game misconduct. With that, you carry a penalty shot and everything else. Looks like Corvo gets the worst of that one. He's the man without the helmet. And that was thanks to big Nick Fatiu. I think he took the stick, though, from Fatiu up Nick, high. high. Nick, Nick wouldn't do that. No. No, no not Nick. Buffalo by three. Back in a moment. Not Nick. Down boots, dude. Everyone likes to go out and have a good time. But if you've had one too many, here's a few suggestions to combine with your night out. Like calling a cab. Counting on a friend. Designating a driver. Or hey, do what we do. Take the bus home. That's it, it Joe. Miller Lite and Brooks and Dunn remind you to please think when you drink, because that's a great sounding combination. Sometimes the sound of roller hockey is all you need. Nick with a little jab there. I don't think he meant to, to really make contact. It was sort of a retaliation move. Fortunately, Corvo was okay. But uh, Pazio making the move to the penalty box, and he has made that one before. Across the surface, Bergeron looking for Beccarelli, intercepted by the Rock and Rollers. Here's McSwain skating out, fakes the shot, makes the move on Neal. One of the techniques in this game, you can make a quick move around the defense, but it's hard for them to go back and forth, left to right. Major, across the surface, Beccarelli in front, and he scores! Daniel Bertschul beaten in front of the net by Bergeron, actually, going to get credit for the goal. Do I hear a we want... Rayom Chen here at the Meadowlands. They might, they want it, but again, it's just great passing. The passing comes across. You just mentioned it. you saw the defenseman fall down right there, and Bergeron, he's actually trying to shoot it, and he gets his stick up. There's the fall by the defenseman. Now watch, Bergeron gets hacked. It's actually that flub on the shot that works. Looks like Berthiom, the goaltender, watch him. He'll be ready for a big shot. There's a hack right onto the arms of Bergeron, and we get a big cheer right here, Craig. If you want Manon Rion, you get Manon Rion because that's what's going to happen right here. It looks like it. She's putting her mask on on the right. bench. Daniel Berthiome is still in goal right now. Oh, Manon, she's getting up. The crowd is going nuts here. There she is. The first lady of ice hockey is now the first lady of roller hockey. And Manon Rion is hearing it from the crowd as if she just led her team to the Stanley Cup or the RHI championship. Man, oh, Rion, she is. Sorry, uh, she's going in. This is a, a pretty gutsy move by Rion. They love her here in New Jersey. Gutsy move because she suffered a hamstring injury about five days ago. She's been out of town doing a few appearances, really hasn't had time to tend all that much. But it doesn't matter. She's back right in there. And Daniel Berthiome, that's the other end of it. He doesn't look happy. He looks a little tired. This Six is the, goals didn't buy him. This is the first national telecast of a female playing the sport of hockey, roller hockey, of course. Maynell Rayom, a 22-year-old, 118-pounder from Lac Beauport, Quebec, he is in the best sport in Jersey. Seven minutes, 51 seconds. 
remaining third quarter. I'm Greg Minervini with Jim Fox. It is really a pleasure to be bringing you the action. I know Jim and I are both enjoying it. As you look at Rion, the stick uh, looks like a peewee size. <laughs> she's not that big, but she's very quick. Looks like she grabbed the goaltending stick from Danielle Berthiaume. Yeah? So right there, it doesn't matter what you have, what kind of equipment. You just rely on yourself. She'll use it. Like I mean, she's not that big, but she is courageous. She's going to stand in front of it again. Yeah. She's denied all of the pessimism about how she's going to play. These players come in and shoot hard. She makes the stop. And again, she is not a gimmick. I mean, she played in the very competitive ECHL this past year. It was 5-0-1 with a 3-6-2 goals against average. We may get a look at her save here. There's the shot, and the world makes the same rebound. Oh, that was wide. She's one for one, stopping John Henry, and this place is going crazy. We're going to whistle. Some pushing and shoving. Talked about equipment, but there you had a great style of a goaltender. Real just comes out to cut down the angle. She's coming down, and there's all kinds. Now watch this reaction. This is before she gets in the game. She doesn't have her stick. She couldn't find it. She's got a buddy right there, Danielle Berthiaud, a little pat on the back. She gets in goal, wastes no time, way out to the top of her crease, makes that one look easy. The rebound was there, but it went wide by Joe. Again, you saw the style. The goaltender must go out to cut it down. Back and forth. Manon playing the goal. Daniel Berthiaud, he played in the National Hockey League with the Winnipeg Jets. Ottawa Senators spent some time in Los Angeles. Now it's time for the Oak to shine right here. 22 years old. Started playing at the age of five. Her favorite goaltender. Well, she was in Quebec at the time. Daniel Bouchard. Former Nordique. Flames goaltender. Got to meet him, too. That must have been a thrill for Mano. Here's Corvo at the point. Seven minutes, eight seconds to go. Buffalo leads by four, but a lot of interest here with Renault. Now in the net. Miraglay in a rare situation here where the fans would love to see the shots go on the net of the home team. They want to see Rayon make a stop. Miraglay gets it out. The momentum could swing the other way with this kind of play, too. Tipped by McSwain. It was stopped by Vertusi. You can sense that New Jersey has gotten a lift from the Rayon presence as well. Exactly, and they're a short hand right here, but when you trail by four goals, you try to go after a goal even though you're down a man. 1.15 to go, tough way to come in with a power play disadvantage. Nick Swain bumped in the corner. Whitmark goes out to play it and bumps it down. I said down a man. I guess I have to change that right now. <laughs> down a player. I know Rayon is going right now, you have to recognize down, that fact. Down a human. Exactly. Yes. Homo sapien, I mean, any of those would, would work for you, Jim. Here's the Chris Bergeron, 49 of the penalty. Comes across the line. Now wheels down low. Top of the left wing circle, number 24, Bergeron. Back to the point. That's number 44, Jane Neal. Bergeron now. Crowd is roaring. And Owen is uh, giving big majors the business in front of the net. Exactly. <laughs> Van Oriol likes to get down low right there to see the shots. The strategy of the Stampede all night on the power play, get the big body in front. Again, it's Mark Major, number 32. We'll take a look at it. Watch Rayon. Whack. Whoa, once on the back. She's going to do it again. Whack, right on the back of the leg. You get away with that as you're a goaltender. She's doing that to clear the front of the net. She allows herself. Look, a little push this time. Major's a big man. Six foot three, 220. But that doesn't stop Rayom at all. She's fighting to see the puck. She jumps on it and holds on. I have one thing to say, only on the deuce. 5.50 to go. They can't clear it though. Neal, good quick pass, Beccarelli. Now Bergeron in front, he's making a good chance. He shoots, and he scores. Oh, that was a good shot, upper quarter. And Buffalo now leads seven to two. Talk about the traffic in front. I know Rayom is down right there. The reason she's down, she got run over by her own player on this one. It's a power play goal. But one of the rock and rollers was skating through the crease and really leveled Ben Rayom down. And that time Bergeron, he picked a spot. He held on. Watch the play. Watch Rayom. Boom. She goes down, takes the elbow. Top corner. Wow. Right into the top. That's the lingerie department right there. Top shelf by Bergeron. 
Unfortunate there for Manoni. Oh, she got run over by an old player. She goes down, but Buffalo keeps going. 7 2 lead. A hat trick for Chris Bergeron now. Buffalo by five. Again, in this wide open game, New Jersey's certainly not out of it, but you've got to have the, the puck at the other end of the surface to get back. Continue throwing his weight. He really rams Johnny Hendrick. And the illegal clear, and we get a stoppage of play here at the Meadowlands. Well, things have gotten interesting. Thanks to that lady in the nets for the Rollers, who trail by five here on the Deuce. It's the best part of the day. You put all your cares away. Get ready for a smile on your face. It's just the right time and just the right place. Special Columbia House offers this month in selected magazines, newspapers, and your mail. Coming up in the RHI, Minnesota at St. Louis tomorrow. The Arctic Blast are off to an incredible start. 47 goals against just 15. Phoenix and Edmonton on Wednesday. Three of the league's top seven scorers on the Cobras. And then it's San Jose, the Rhinos, playing the Bullfrogs at the pond. Brent Segrin leading the league so far. Here it's Buffalo looking for their third win against no defeats. They've got a very comfortable five-goal lead in front of Mirabway. Nice job to set up Joe, but he missed the net. Now Fatio reaching for it, grabs it, throws it toward the net. Played by Hicks behind the net. Fatio bumps him. Yes, that's the same Nick Fatio that played for 13 years in the NHL. Hicks dropping for Nick on first. Surround in front and stopped by Mayno Rayon. And that was a great save. As she did the splits, got the leg out, and made the stop on Big Major. Mayno Rayon, the first female to play in an NHL contest, playing for Tampa Bay in an exhibition game back in 92. But here's the play. Actually, it was Sosha who was stopped. And look at the puck stopping at the pad. Just 5'6", 118 pounds. The team Canada to, to the uh, Women's World Championship, winning the gold medal back in April. And her eyes on the Winter Olympics in Japan, 1998. That is the first women's hockey coming to the Winter Olympics. I'm sure Mayno would love to be between the pipes. Haru running out with it, wheeling in, breakaway chance, check for me, everybody scores! Eve Haru. And the Rollers are back to within four. Here's Haru coming in. Their leading scorer with his first goal of the game. Took the breakaway and took the check too. Watch him take the check from Neil, but he still got the shot off and he knew right where he was going. He kept it on the surface, and he put it right to the corner for his fourth goal of the year. A big one for the Rollers, who now get back to within four goals. Steve Haru played a game with the Quebec Nordique in his career. He's from Quebec, 29 years of age. Our Jim Fox is headed downstairs again. He'll be working the benches. And I understand we're going to be hearing from the coach of the Buffalo Stampede, Chris McSorley, during the uh, actual game. Chris is going to talk with our Jim Fox. That should be interesting. Four minutes, 
28 seconds. Tommy, was that you to pass that puck out? Let's listen to Chris. Tap. Well, I want to see how you are. Yep, you're, you're going, you're off, now you're back on. Major, Meccarelli, Corvo Hicks. That's what the coach usually says on the bench. If it's not a pat on the back, it's the names. The next four guys that will hit the surface, and you heard them from the coach, Chris McSorley. And in that wraparound chance, no, they were looking for the point man. Good deflection, though, by Bobby Cowan for New Jersey. Now it's Bergeron coming down. Drops it from McSween over to Cowan. Picked off by Buffalo, and the Stampede will come out. LeMay goes to the left side. Chris Bergeron already has three. He's rammed. Good check by Woodmark. And New Jersey takes the check and the puck. McSwain at center, 3.44 to go. Down the left side, Cowan in front! Oh, he had Bergeron, Martin Bergeron. He could not tee it up. Back to Woodmark. Steers toward the net. Goes wide, right wing side. Play there by Martin Bergeron. Throws it in the screen. Good stop by Matusi. It was getting lost in the goaltender story here with Maynard in the game, but he made a good stop on the screen. A key play, Jim, with uh, the Rollers getting some momentum after that goal. Three minutes, 23 seconds here in the third quarter. And it is rocking and rolling here at the Meadowlands. I can barely hear myself, so I know what it must be like for Jim Fox down on the surface. Jim, can you hear me? Yeah, Craig, everything's all right right down here. You see the Buffalo Stampede. They're kind of talking it up around each other, just saying cool down a little bit. They have a four-goal lead. Rock and roll is starting to play better, but they want to regain their composure. A little noisy in here, huh? Well, not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> they can make it now. Shots, did that go in? No. Stopped by Matusi, who slid across. That nearly got by him. Here's Major coming in. Mark Major, number 32. Centering it, deflected wide by Marshall. It looks like New Jersey has stepped up the defense. They are not giving up as many good scoring chances as they did with Furchum in there. Hicks at the left point. And Manoli probably does that to your game plan. You want to play a little harder, perhaps, for him. Net knocked off after the Rayom stop. So we got a break with 2.36. Jim is standing by with Chris McSorley. Thanks very much, Craig. Chris, we talked this morning, you talk about intensity, but execution, your team is executed tonight, doing just about everything you mentioned this morning. Well, right now, we've got real good puck pressure. We're applying the real good, strong forecheck. We're going to make them. If we're gonna, they're going to get us on a goal. We're going to have to make sure it's going to be a highlight film. We want to make sure they're going to be forced into a good play. The one thing I'm concerned about, they made that goal tender change. And Ohm sees it giving that team a bit of a spark that they needed. What can you do here down at the bench to try and get your team now back up? We're hopefully trying to get a couple quick ones behind Ohm, Try to take the real kind of the, the intensity out of this team over here. All right, back to the game. All right, Jim, you're right. We noticed that, that the team is... In New Jersey, and the white really picked up their intensity. Neil, sharp angle, stopped by Manon Rayon. And I'll tell you something, every time she makes a save, it's going to add a little more enthusiasm and excitement to the rock and roller game plan. Craig, I think McSorley brought up something very interesting right there. We're going to take a look at that last chance. Manon Rayon has to make the save again. She makes it look easy. Positioning is very important. That shot coming right off the faceoff. The Stampede like to set up their chances right there. They're looking for picks. Look at Rayom. She knows it's a bad angle. She doesn't move first. Makes it look easy. But I mentioned the comments of Chris McSorley. As a coach, you don't only have to think about X's and O's. He recognized the fact that there was a change in momentum because of the new goaltender, and he has to alert his team about that. I know played for Nick Fatio at Nashville. Stop on the point. Stop by Rayom. Comes across the surface. She was so popular at Nashville. She had to have a 345-pound bodyguard at the home games. Fatio with a wrister. Loved by Matusi, and he hangs on with two minutes and 16 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Nigeria and Bulgaria, the World Cup coming up on Tuesday, June 21st, from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas at 7.25 Eastern and 4.25 on the Pacific Coast. And then Thursday, Foxborough in Boston. It's South Korea against Bolivia. 725 Eastern, 425 Pacific. Coming up. And of course, we're in World Cup Haven here. 
action going on at Giant Stadium across the street. Ireland with a shocker over Italy, 1-0 in their first game a few days ago. My favorite World Cup name, Italy's Roberto Baggio. <laughs> you should have done soccer with those rolling R's. <laughs> There's Neil at the line. You like that soccer a lot, too, don't you? Oh, it's great game, great yeah. game. Not, not scoring, but a lot of thinking. Widmark has it. Surprise you like it, being the, that combination. <laughs> and trying a shot, missed, oh, good play there by Batusi. As he deflected the man away. Not much scoring, a lot of thinking. Uh, you were a lot of scoring, but I don't know about the thinking part, you're dead. Obviously, you didn't see me play that. <laughs> Big check in the corner by McSwain. Minute 29 to go, third quarter. Boy, New Jersey would love to get one more heading for the fourth. LeMay in front, picked off nicely by Woodmark. He'll come out two on one. He has Bergeron on the right. Mix, uh, he comes in, he throws the Bergeron shot, score! And the Rollers have done just that. They've scored their fourth. They're second in a row. The lead is down to three. That's Whitmark, Jim. He made a nice setup. Certainly is a great two-on-one. You see Whitmark moving to the back end there for the pass. But I think one thing to keep in mind, both players coming down on their off wings. So when the pass comes across, one-time shot. And it's perfectly placed right there by Bergeron. You saw the skill there by Whitmark. It's a difficult play to make a backhand pass. He made no mistake. But now, once again, Craig, you mentioned it. The fans getting riled up. The momentum has changed here. I thought that was going to be very difficult the way Buffalo was playing. But New Jersey went back in this thing. Martin Bergeron, a Ranger draft pick back in 1988. But at Whitmark made the play with a nifty move, as you said, from the forehand to the backhand. They get around the defenseman, Bergeron, and free up the lane for the pass. That set up the goal. Rollers within three. Less than a minute to go. Sosha could move in front himself. Now the backhand rammed wide by Big Major. And now Haru comes out two on two. On the left wing, goes ahead for Wells and scores! Ho-ho! Mayno Rayom on one end has lit up this place. And on the other end, the Rock and Rollers feeding off that enthusiasm has scored three straight. If they get chances like this, they're going to pay off. Once again, it's a two-on-one. Wild Goose keeping it simple, taking the quick snapshot. Nice, long cross-ice pass right there. But once again, I don't think you have to talk about execution. Wild Goose, quick release. Keeping the puck low, that makes it more difficult for a goaltender. You can't get the gloves on it. We love the Goose. Hey, he's here the, in New Jersey. Yeah, he has a rest right now, but get him back out there. I think it's a good time right here. It looks like Buffalo will wait till the break between the third and fourth quarters, but you can use a timeout to stop that momentum. I think Chris McSorley would love to find another female goaltender in the house, huh? That has changed things around. 25 seconds to go. Here's Belagie. Could they get another one? In front, waiting, waiting, shooting. Went high in the... And then grabbed down by Vatusi. We're going to whistle with 15.6 to go. Here's the third. Lyle Wild Goose getting his first goal of the game. And the bat on the top of the helmet, third goal of the year. ECHL two-time All-Star at Raleigh, very popular in North Carolina. He's a graduate of Providence College, social sciences degree. There is Mino, I beg your pardon, there is Nick Vatusi. And you know something, as Fainot said to us, Jim, when she puts the mask and the pads on, she's just another goaltender. She hasn't been just another one here. She's really come in, make a couple of big saves early. They got one by her, but then the concentration was back. She has given this team an emotional lift, and they're paying off right now. Her presence, I think, has just brought the Rollers out to play more of their game. This period will wind down now. Buck's still in the zone, maybe one more shot. Goes toward the net, batted wide, and that's it. Well, we went from what looked like a blowout to a very, very good game. Maynard Rayom has come on, and the Rollers have done the same. 
Buffaloes lead. Once five is down to two with 12 minutes remaining. Here at the Battleads, we'll come back with the fourth quarter. Stampede by two. Are you still drinking the old thing? Try the next thing, Powerade. With 33% more carbos than Gatorade and a taste you can really slam. Powerade, the next thing. I'm here to see Sterling Sharp, please. Name, please. Name. Hey! Now let me tell you a little about Sterling before we meet him. He's a strong man, man. Sterling's like a freight train with stick up. <laughs> Sterling, you remember me. I work with you. You OK, man? Like a freight train, man. Choo-choo. Choo-choo, baby. Acura's slogan says some things are worth the price. So we tested the $14,000 Nissan Altima XE against the $39,000 Legend LS. And the Altima outcornered it out-slalomed it, and out-accelerated it. It also beat it in wet and dry evasive maneuvering tests. So while some things are worth the price, evidently the Altima is worth far more than the price. On July 15th, 20th Century Fox invites you to sit back and enjoy the ride. Because this summer, Nothing is what it seems. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jamie Lee Curtis, in a James Cameron film. True Lies starts Friday, July 15th at theaters everywhere. Hey, our game rewind. Chris Berger on three goals for Buffalo and an assist. Buffalo with three goals, first 541 of the third. Bert Hume had a, some problems. He was really hit hard with a lot of shots. 31 allowed six goals. But New Jersey came back after Mayno Rayon came on. He scored two goals in the final 113 and three consecutive. They were down 7-2 at one point. They came back with three straight. And we've got a two-goal hockey game once again here in the RHI game of the week. And there is Menon Rayon, who will get a chance to keep a record undefeated for 1993-94. As we mentioned, she was 5-0-1 at Nashville in the ECHL. Nick Petucci, all-time leading winner in the ECHL among goalies, over 100 wins, and he'll be relied on for the stampede. Buffalo comes in quickly. All around in front was Sharon, and they could not get him the puck. Now Craig Martin plays it. Back to the point, Neal. Over to the right side, skating in, shot wide of that by David LeMay. Mirabue plays it, number 11, in the right to Nick Petillo. Arms down, Martin can't get the puck out, though. LeMay skates in. LeMay checked by Mirabue. LeMay still has the puck. LeMay now. Goes to the left side of Neal. Four on four. 11-18 to go in regulation. Neal playing it at the point. Goes toward the net, goes wide of the net, and pushing and shoving between Cerrone and Mirabue. Avoiding the puck for a moment. Now Cerrone in front. Back to the point, shot. And score. It got through, Menon Rayon. Dave LeMay. And Buffalo has that three-goal lead again. Good move in right there. A lot of traffic in front. The crisscross is going. And finding a man coming in from behind the traffic was LeMay. And he looked at it all the way. Pass coming out from the corner. There's the traffic. You saw the crisscross in front. The big screen, Nick Fatiu, 22. Take a look from way on top of the players. Look at 22 Fatiu. He tries to play goalie right there. Goal tenders hate that. All it does is create a screen. They can't see the puck. And Dave LeMay, fifth goal of the season. Tough to argue, though, when it's your coach who is the guy that blocks you, huh? <laughs> I mean, what can you say to Nick? He's the coach. You can't tell him not to block you. 
Beccarelli dumps it around. And Torvo now playing for Buffalo. 10.45 in regulation. Bergeron for New Jersey in that corner. Worked out by Buffalo. Bergeron hooked down a fellow Bergeron and Chris Bergeron who's got the hat trick. Now Beccarelli down the right wing. Rolls it around the boards. Wheeling in is Bergeron again. On the blades. Toward the net. Hits the side of the cage. And New Jersey will try to work it out. Good one. Back to Bergeron. Martin Bergeron back at the woodwork. Flying into the zone. Down the wing. Dumps it back. Chris Bergeron has it. Number 24 in the black. Goes across the surface. A rolling top. Campine and a player hanging down in the zone. Got to be careful about that. Ridmark has it. We're inside 10 minutes, fourth quarter. Buffalo in the black. Leads by three. Beccarelli hooks from behind. Penley is coming on New Jersey. Here's Corvo with a chance. Corvo tries to move. Ray will play it. And we get the whistle. Jim Fox standing by on the New Jersey bench. Uh-oh. Beccarelli going after one of the uh, rock and rollers. Beccarelli upset. It looked like he got caught with a hook, but the hook kind of glanced off his shoulder, went a little high. He's a little upset, but I'm down here on the bench with Lyle Lagos. Down by three right now. You scored the last goal for your team, but talk about the goaltending change. How does that affect the other members of the team? Oh, well, it definitely picks us up. I mean, you know, the crowd goes crazy whenever the Manny's name's mentioned. Having her in the net just uh, lifts the crowd up, and that definitely lifts uh, the players up. But, I mean, it wasn't anything uh, uh, Danny did wrong in the net. We just weren't giving him any support, and we needed a little boost, and Manny gave it to us. Right now I hear the coach telling you guys you're down by three, but what he's saying is patience, patience. How difficult to stay patient when you're trailing by three? Uh, it's difficult because you want to keep taking chances, but, uh, I mean, we got a, a, a firepower on this bench, and, uh, you know, we're just going to stick to our guns and uh, hopefully get a few breaks like we did uh, at the end of the third quarter. All right, go get them. Thank you. Buffalo went 4-2 at the half. The teams traded three goals aside in the third, but it was very strange because Buffalo scored the first three, and then New Jersey came back with three straight to get back into it. Stampede with a goal early here in the fourth. Regaining the three-goal lead. Bob Cowan in the box for the Rock and Rollers, a high stick. Cowan played in Sweden last year, also a graduate of Providence College, has an administrative business degree. There's Eve Haru, big score for the Rock and Rollers, out to kill it off now. Thirty-three remaining here in the fourth quarter. Len Sosha and Haru on the draw. Comes back across the line. Stampede was turning around. And here's Tom Nemeth, ECHL Defenseman of the Year this past year. 98 eight points there. Side of the net, stopped by Rayom in front. Good defensive play by Haru. Melange trying to help him clear it. Goes behind the net. Craig Martin is over there, number 61. On the left wing corner, 128 in the penalty. Watch them work it around with the crisp passing. Nemeth now, cross ice shot. Sosha wider than that. Down the net. Sosha plays it again in the corner. Mark Major. Two tough guys are out there, big guys. Martin and Major up front. They're in. The crease also shot, score! Quick move by Sosha and Lenny. Dents the twine, and Buffalo's got that four-goal lead back. I'm gonna go back onto the Harping picks in front, big men in front on the power play. And if the puck carrier is aggressive with it, watch him, no hesitation. Out to the front of the net, get to the scoring area. Sosha right there, he knows he's gonna get hacked, but there really was no one waiting. Look at big 32. 61 moves in there, Craig, Mark, they're all right there creating traffic. And the puck carrier social, he knew exactly what to do right there. Take the time that was given to him, and he makes it with a nice shot way up high. So it's 9-5 as the Stampede have done exactly what their coach wanted them to do. Come out with a quick 
couple of goals. Loud goes in front shot. Oh, he looked like he beat the goaltender, but somehow Matusi made the stop. That would have been a big, again, turn of events. Here's Theroux coming down. His wrist went wide with that. He plays the puck in the left wing corner. Buffalo has done exactly what they wanted to do, take their way own factor out of the game by scoring two quick ones here in the fourth. Wild Goose plays it off the boards, up to Heru. Wheeling at center, turns it around, stolen back by Cerrone. For Buffalo, here's Cerrone. Gets around his man. Down on the left side, LeMay, shot! Good deflection in front as Wild Goose went down to make the stop. Now in the corner, a penalty upcoming, away from the action. And we'll have a power play opportunity here at the Battlelands. It's the Stampede by four. The King of Burgers celebrates the Lion King now in theaters with Lion King size values like our $1.99 hamburger kids meal with a Lion King toy featuring Disney's newest stars and our Whopper value meal for just $2.99. Bring your family to Burger King where value is king every day. The evolution of sports news. <laughs> Coach Antonius Priscillis. Suspended Davy Phillips today. Calling the player an errant name. A rogue. A scoundrel. A double cross and no good low down snipe. They exchanged heated words. Then they all sat down, talked it out. Sports Night. What's next in sports news? Live Sunday through Thursday at 5 on ESPN2. Well, Buffalo leading by four, and they have a power play chance here with 7.50 remaining in regulation. Perhaps imperative that the Rock and Rollers stop the, the stampede here. Craig, I mentioned earlier it was near the end of the third quarter. Perhaps the stampede should take a timeout, but I think a good move now in second thought by McSorley. He did not want to startle his team. He didn't want to panic them. He just waited till the end of the quarter. Then they regained their composure, came out strong in the fourth quarter. Here's Hicks now skating in his own zone. Seven and a half remaining in regulation. But you would have called a timeout and startled your team. That exactly, you exactly. I would have blew it all the way. I would have called the timeout. The team, the team would have lost it. But now they're ahead again. That's why you're in the booth. Exactly. Or should we say, on the bench, as you are right now. Alex Hicks coming in. Wrist shot stopped by the defense. Another shot. The net is off the goal line. And that's why they whistled it dead. 24 teams make up the RHI in the Atlantic. Buffalo looking to make it 3-0 and take a two-point lead on the Roadrunners of Montreal. We were very impressed with Montreal. We saw the Roadrunners beat the Tritons in last week's game of Tampa Bay. Philadelphia at 1-1. RHI Central story, headed by the Minnesota Arctic Blast, 3-0 so far. St. Louis Vipers at 2-1. We'll see the Pittsburgh Phantoms in a few weeks. Brian Trache playing with them. The Fire Ants of Atlanta with their first victory. We'll check out the Western Conference as we move along. And then 23 seconds remaining on the penalty to Wild Wild Goose. There's Steve McSween on the draw. And the Rock and Rollers clear it all the way down. Hicks coming in. Across the surface to Beccarelli. At the right point, now Hicks left point, right point, Beccarelli. Now aggressively coming out. Hicks skates in. Looks to the left side as Bergeron back, Beccarelli. Quick passing shot, score! Textbook passing. Power play goal by John Beccarelli. And Buffalo leads by five. The setup here by the Stampede is kind of by design. They want the one-time shooters, which just means that the left-hand shooter is on the right-hand side of the ice. So when they receive the puck like Beccarelli does, nice look right here from above. You see the three penalty killers. There's always that traffic in front, so that occupies one of the penalty killers. Watch the pass. It goes down low, then right back across the seam. There's the one-time shooter. I think Beccarelli used... The defender trying to block that shot. Nick Patillo back on the bench. He's shaking his head right now. He's playing tonight. 
Doesn't look good right now, down by five. There's Belanger coming in, quick slap shot, stopped by a forgotten man in the last few minutes, Nick Vitusi. In the Northwest Division, the Cobras of Phoenix off to a great start at five and two. The Calgary Rads are three and one. We'll see the Vancouver Voodoo. We'll be up in Vancouver for the All-Star Game next month. Out of the Pacific, we've seen a few of the teams already. Anaheim Bullfrogs continue to be undefeated at 4-0. Alange shot wide of the net. We'll see the Los Angeles Blades in a few weeks in L.A. In front, another chance. This time, Rayon makes the stop. Rollers down by five. There's Belanger for a screen, a slap shot. And a leg goes wide of the net to the right wing side. Wild Goose playing after. In front, Jones, quick shot, missed the net. Wild Goose again, can't get it, and Major dumps it down. Here's Jane Neal, number 44, skating in for Buffalo. Drops it back, played by Chris Belanger. Up the boards to Wild Goose. Wild, Wild Goose comes in. Gets a better angle. Now to Job. Waiting, waiting a little too long in front. They tried to set up Belange. They couldn't do it. No defense back. Neil may get a shot here. Lenny Neal coming in. Shot stopped by Rayon. She'll stop that one and hang on to it. They know Rayon doing her best here. Facing an onslaught in the fourth. Stampede leading by five. Fresca has a distinctive citrus taste that can't be found in any other soft drink. It also has no sugar, no caffeine, and almost no calories. All of which makes Fresca quite irresistible. Fresca, the tasteful alternative. For this guy, any deodorant will do. But these guys need Speed Stick. Any perspirant that gives 110%, even if you don't. 24-hour protection against wetness. And now Speed Stick deodorant has a powerful new formula to fight odor. Speed Stick. For movers and shakers, the number one, the only one. Well, the fans are getting into the disco flavor here. At the home of the Rock and Rollers, the Meadowlands Arena. What excitement they had in here, hockey-wise, this year with the fine play of the New Jersey Devils. As you watch the stop again by Maino Rayon, making her RHI debut. Jim, she's faced a lot of shots, but she really has done very well. She really has. As I mentioned earlier, she's very quick. She plays that butterfly position. Jim Rome asks the questions you want answered. Your favorite athletes join Romy on Talk 2 weeknights here on the news. Has Mano Rayon been on Talk 2 yet? I would think so, because Jim Rome's one of those hip guys who has the in people. Here's a roof shot, score! Hey, put Eve Haru on Jim Rome's show. <laughs> He's got a couple of goals, and the Rollers, no, they are not out of it. They're now within four goals. Kind of determination by Haru. His goals tonight have been just taking the puck down the wing and firing it. He gets a chance there because of speed to buy himself some time and then set up finally. Watch Haru. He's kind of even right there with LeMay, but blows by him. Settles down the puck. No, look at that puck. It's rolling all the way. He doesn't even settle it down, and he goes tweeners right there against the goaltender. So Haru picks a very, very tight spot with a rolling puck. His team, though, still trailing by four. I think he bothered Batucci. He waited forever to get his blade on the puck. That must be unnerving there for the goaltender, too. Yeah. You saw the right. puck. It's rolling. Goaltender doesn't know where it's going to go. He may have been waiting for it to come back down, but he just waited and waited and waited and found a spot, as Jim likes to say, the tweeners. And the rollers are within four. So shot behind the net, number 20, and the unique numbers. On the Buffalo uniform, dumps it back to the center zone. Widmark will play it. Beccarelli doing a good job forechecking, forcing Widmark back. Number seven, Pair Widmark. 
Very good with the puck from Sweden. 23 years of age. Cross ice, quick shot. Oh, McSwain, who played in Austria last year, missed the net. Now Widmark will go back after it for New Jersey. 4.35 to go. Fourth quarter, I'm Craig Minervini, along with Jim Fox. And it's great to have you aboard for our weekly RHI telecast. Puck flip toward the center, back to Widmark. 4.20 to go. Here's McSwain skating in. Drops it back for Cowan. His shot missed it, and it was deflected by Cerrone, who's down on the cement. And we get a whistle. He may have taken the stick on the follow-through. And speaking of that, they may have whistled McSwain for the penalty. There's nothing really there, Marty. We're going to take a break here from the Meadowlands. Buffalo, another power play as they lead by four. If you play ice, roller, or street hockey, then check out this special offer from Hockey Player, the magazine for those who play. Each issue is packed with what you need to get the most out of playing the world's fastest team sport. Interviews with NHL stars and coaches, playing tips for the pros, equipment reviews, conditioning drills, new products, and more. Dial 1-800-652-0101 to subscribe. Order with Visa or MasterCard and receive your free bonus gift. 101 Hockey Tips. This booklet is a must-have source of winning edge hockey secrets. Subscribe to Hockey Player and improve every aspect of your game with special columns and departments for goalies, defensemen, forwards, coaches, and more. So whether you play on the ice or in the street, call 1-800-652-0101 and get ready to score. To subscribe, call 1-800-652-0101. A year's subscription of 10 issues is only $15.95. Order now with Visa or MasterCard and receive your free gift, 101 Hockey Tips. That's 1-800-652-0101. You hit the ramp at 52 miles an hour and fly 100 feet. Your mind says fear. Your mind says pain. Your mind says death. I don't mind. Well, the penalty box opened when we left you, but it is closed now with no player in it. And did not decide to call a penalty. So we'll go four on four. That's a break for New Jersey. You're trying to get back in it. Down by four with 4.10 to go. Back to the point. Belange skating in. Now it's Uruguay in the corner. He's bumped cleanly. Nemeth is on top of the puck. Waiting for the whistle. Trying to move it a little bit. Now he kicks it backwards over to Jay Neal. Jay Neal, number 44, ahead for Nemeth. Skating in. Good poke check by Trevor Joe. Here's Chris Belanger, number 50, in the white for New Jersey. Down the right wing, 3.30 to go. Centering it, Mirabre tipped it toward the cage. Easy stop, though, for Vatusi. Let's go down to Jim Fox on the bench again, Jim. All right, Craig, thanks again. We're here with Dave LeMay. Dave, let me tell you, but let me ask you, Chris McSorley, the coach, says you're a smart, steady defenseman, one of those stay-at-home guys. Does that work in roller hockey? Uh, yeah, to a certain extent. I think you got to uh, jump and play when you get a chance. It's a lot of offense here, but you also got to stay back, play good defense. Let's go back to the end of the third quarter. Looked like a little bit, you guys on the ropes, the rock and rollers really putting the goals in. What'd you do to get the composure back? I think Chris has told us to bear down, pick up a man, stay with him, finish your checks when you get a chance. All right, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. 3.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. Buffalo on the power, or not on the power play, they're on four and four here, but they're leading by four goals as New Jersey tries to get back into it. Haru coming in. Over to Paul Marshall, left point, lost control. Alex is trying to get a break. Up from behind by Haru, that will be a penalty, and they whistled it down, so Buffalo now will get the power play chance, and they'll try to add to their four-goal lead. We'll see if there's a couple of penalties right here, Craig. After the first man went down, 
I got a stampede player, I think it was Alex Hicks, 94. He went down, but when he was going down, he grabbed the stick right. of the rock and roll player. So Hicks goes to the box. I think we're going to get an initial penalty. Two and two. That's the way. That's the way. Good job. That's the way. It's Rue and Hicks. It's Hicks who grabs the stick right there. And Hicks is in the box. You saw the reaction of Chris McSorley. He was not happy. He thought there should have been a hook well, called earlier on the play. It didn't work. It went against his team. Yeah. His team leads 10-6. Now they'll be that call. Honest to God, you know what he did? Since we touched the puck first and he realized how stupid he was blowing the whistle, then he decided, well, I don't want to be such a stupid bastard. I'm going to get block a penalty. Uh oh. He got the National Hockey League. He told me. Chris McSorley, as you might expect, was not one of those finesse guys. He would never be up for the Lady Bing trophy. <laughs> and yeah, the coach is obviously riled by that call. He thought, like we thought, I think, that the original penalty was going to be against New Jersey. It's just the opposite, although the Rock and Rollers penalty bench keeps opening up. I don't think anybody's heading off. John, oh, oh. go ahead, John. John. Greg, I think what McSorley is upset about what is this? I'm going to give you a hand sign. You ready? What's this? Hold it. What's this? Oh. Two minutes more, right? How come it's only two minutes to the clock? So he's still upset. He Good. wants to figure this out. The penalty situation may have a double liner here, maybe an unsportsmanlike. Let's listen to the referees at the uh, scorer's table. 28 White's got a holding minor. He said 28 white holding minor. So uh, there's going to be a penalty on each side. Frank, the refs should just listen to us. That's exactly the way we call it. So. I'll tell you what I'm impressed with. Chris McSorley has his referee signals down very well. He's <laughs> been right. reading that book. I think that would be something really weird to see Chris McSorley in the stripes. <laughs> he should hey. argue with him. Hey, wait a minute. Look, look at Paul Stewart in the National Hockey League. That's right. He was a tough guy. Became an official. Well, I think McSorley's argument was correct. What a player can do at times, they allow you to hold the stick for a split second if you're warding off someone, just trying to protect yourself. But you saw their hips held on a little too long, but at the same time, two penalties should have been called. That's what happened. So he skate three on three. Well, actually, it's going to be uh, two penalties on the Buffalo Stampede and only one on New Jersey. So they're skating four on three. That might be one of those unsportsmanlike situations where the referees thought there was too much talking. So actually, it's a, it does turn out to be a power play for New Jersey. And they better move here. 2.44 to go. The clock not on their side. Down by four. Get it up there. Trevor Jones in front. Chris Barrage will skate out around LeMay. Coming in. The man all alone. He couldn't get it to him. Oh, he had wild goose at the right side of the net. We have not seen, by the way, player coach Nick Petillo here in the fourth quarter. Mirabley works it through to Jones. Another penalty of coming, perhaps. No, they pull the goaltender with 2.15 to go. New Jersey has pulled the goalie. They've got five skaters to three. Wild goose to Bellagio. Shot stop. Good glove stop by Matusi. And he hangs on. This is something you would not see in the NHL, but in roller hockey, why not? New Jersey's going to try and pull a goalkeeper to get two men on the advantage. Gregor down here at the bench. I was just about to talk to Nick Fatio. You mentioned you hadn't seen him here in the fourth. Now he jumps on the ice. We'll see what's going to happen. I'm sure they're going to try and use Fatio in the situation where big man in front of the net. Keep in mind, the Rock and Rollers have pulled the goaltender. So with the power play in effect before pulling the goaltender, in essence, a two-man advantage, a two-person advantage, they're looking for the goals. Now you could say man now because Rio's out of the game. Okay. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll give you that. 2.05 to go in the quarter, a minute on the penalty. New Jersey has the puck. They have a five-on-three advantage. Melange goes after it. It's a little bit weary now. Makes the move. Now it's five-on-two, basically. Left side, shot stopped by on the Woodmark shot. Patillo going after it, and Neal could not clear it. 145 of the game. Here's Belange. Near side, Wild Goose. Back to Belange. Off his skate. 
Elijah back to Wild Goose in front. Got through, and now Neal will send it down. And going after it is Nemeth with an open net. Fakes and scores. And that will do it. So Tom Nemeth, the nemesis here with 126 to go. And Vic Foza and the Rock and Rollers will have to wait for another evening. Difficult chance here for the Rock and Rollers. They really couldn't get the puck moving around on that power play attempt. There's Manon Reon. She goes back into the goal. They had the screen set up in front, but I think that just made them stand around a little bit too much. Finally, the persistence of the Buffalo Stampede. They gotta like what's happened here. We talked about it already, Craig. They performed the game plan to a T. They came out here in special situations, did the job. It works for them on the scoreboard, leading 11-6. Stampede will go to 3-0. They can hang on to their five-goal lead. In the final minute, 18. Ready for a Florida swing. They'll play at Tampa Bay on Friday night. Then they'll play at the Hammerheads at the Miami Arena on Sunday night. New Jersey will host the Montreal Roadrunners one week from tonight in their next game. Here's Whitmark ahead now for New Jersey. Quick shot stopped by Reducey. He has really played a fine game. Cowan throws it back to the point. Whitmark has it. 50 seconds in the game. Into the right wing corner. Played by McSwain. The penalties are up. It's four on four. Cowan now going after it. Dumps it behind the net. 36 seconds to go. Been an interesting game. Some good saves. The appearance of Reno Rayon certainly causing a stir. She did very well. Here's Whitmark coming in with 20 seconds to go. Close it wide of the cage. Sports night is coming up next. With Susie and Stewart. There's Cowan in the corner. Now McSwain with 10 seconds to go. Pokes away. One more, more shot, perhaps. On Rayon. There's Nemeth coming in. And the backhand shot. Hit the post. Or no, it went in. They're going to call it a goal with 3.8 to go. He's going right to the net. The fans here in New Jersey not happy, but Tom Nemeth is happy. Rayon Rayon tried to get across a little quick. Very courageous tonight. She comes in without very much practice. She's had four days off. She's had a hamstring injury. And Tom Nemeth just picks up the puck right at the center line. We'll see right here. We'll try to take a listen here. I thought it hit the post. Let's listen. Jim, that was not into my book. I thought it went from post to post or post to crossbar. Well, what happened right here, Craig, I can see it. It hit the middle post, the white bar that's right in the middle of the net. Did nice it? move on the backhand. 12-6, the final. Your final thoughts on this one, Jim? Keep going with the execution. You can play with intensity. You can talk it up on the bench. You can play physical. That's what McSorley wants from his Buffalo Stampede. But they executed all the way. Controlled momentum. So the Buffalo Stampede go to 3-0 after defeating the New Jersey Rock and Rollers by the final score of 12-6 here at the Battlelands in East Rutherford. Next week, our next game, the Sacramento River Rats will take on the Oakland Skates in Oakland. Jim and I will be there, and we'll have it for you next Monday, the 27th of June, at 7 o'clock, right here on the news. So for Jim Fox, Craig Minervini, Sports Night is next. So long, everybody. Sports Night.